business with a servant's heart. Servant's heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take servant's heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life, we're going to speak on business You're gonna shine bright, we are going to witness Business with a servant's heart, servant's heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks servant's heart. Listen to the podcast Steve Ramona. Welcome to the world of a business owner, juggling a whirlwind of responsibilities two to five years into the journey. Now, envision the, the transformative power of a mentor guiding you towards efficiency, fostering communication skills, and setting realistic goals. This mentor is the key molding a successful, profitable, socially conscious company. Harness the power of mentorship and let your business thrive. Brainshare Business Mentors is one of the top 10 mentoring firms in the San Francisco Bay Area. Let us help you build the business of your dreams. Select your path and get started today. Welcome everyone to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose, serving others and achieving success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated to learn how to do business and live life to make an impact in the world. How will you serve today and what impact will you create today as you listen to my two incredible guests? Yeah, I got two guests today. Two for the price of one, as Chase said. I want to thank my sponsors, Brainshare.us. They uh, build a business that works without you. Discover how to create a self-sustaining business that thrives even in your absence. You can have a business that doesn't tie you down, will guide you through the steps to build an enterprise to operate smoothly without your constant oversight. And Pitch DB. Imagine you're on 3 million different podcasts. You have 11,000 speaking gigs. You're in the newspaper. You're in our magazine, uh, radio, TV. That's what Pitch DB does. It'll pitch all these different media outlets to increase your thought leader platform and increase your expertise. I use it. It's been a great benefit to me. Increase your net worth to increase your net worth. And like I said, I talk about impact. I've got two powerful guys today. Incredible stories but more importantly, have a big heart. That's why they're here. Rami and Chase, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Did I say it right? Rami, I did. I was practicing in my head before we got started. We're going to start with you, Rami, and and I want to hear your story. It's an incredible story. All right. Well, uh, I'll make it quick because I could take days telling the story, but uh, (laughs) But I read a book called Think and Grow Rich when I was 12 years old, and I read that 20 times, and I thought I could conquer the world. So I left home at 12, hitchhiked to Florida, and I was homeless from 12 to 17 before I made the first million dollars. And then I went broke again. But then when I came back uh, at 23, I was worth 50 million. And then again, when I went uh, from that, I saw Adnan Khashoggi, the richest man in the world on television. I wanted to work with him. And I thought, that you know, if I was going to be like him, you know, I need to go work for him. So I kind of sold everything at a fire sale, chased him down for four years, went broke. But last minute, I convinced him to let me do one deal and work with him. And I worked with him for 10, 15 years, made a billion dollars with him. And then uh, I, 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 I came to LA for a break. So I started a company that was worth billions. And then 9-11 came and it was a public company. It shut down lost all the money, fought the government for seven years, homeless again. And then since then, I've been rebuilding. And within uh, I was down in the street with $21 like six, seven years ago and we made the billion dollars in those six years. So I, I'm there to prove that you can really make money just using the principles of what thinking grow rich. So I wrote a book, Can You Really Think and Grow Rich? It outlines there. So if anybody wants to read it and get it, it'll inspire you and show you the principle you need to really succeed. But at the same time, being in the it, being homeless, it became my cause of that. Do that a, a lot around Christmas time. I go downtown to 
LA here and give away $25, $20 for all the homeless people, 30,000 people. So that's my thing I do in Christmas and stuff. And, and I always want to give back because if you read all the great industrials in, in the past, like, uh, like Rockefeller and, and Getty and all those guys, you know, they, at the beginning they made money, but they, at the end it was a competition who can give away all their money. Even Mellon was in there and he was upset he died before he gave away all his money. So part of really building is at the end is really to give back. So this whole thing is now giving back. You know, I'm in a stage of my life, man. Up now, I want to give back, and that's why I started my own char charity called uh, Independence Empowerment Initiative, which is uh, the website is ie dash i dot org, and I work with uh, Chase Under Wishes to help now raise money, and we do something really special because a homeless problem is a big uh, big thing for me. So I've decided to really fix it. I thought because I really think big to fix it in one shot. So I'm building a whole city. I'm actually taking over a whole city that fits a million people. And I'm building the whole infrastructure of homes to be able to move in every single homeless person in the country and all the vets, all the low income people. So this city will have all the services and all the support of the government services. So it'll create a new America. There won't be a homeless person in America left by the time I'm finished in five years. So that is my goal, and that's what this charity is all about. I mean, you guys told me this is a story, but holy crap. I want to recap real quick. 23, you had 50 million, right. lost it, became right. a billionaire with a B, right. lost it, right? Became a billionaire again, lost it. So you lost 2.2 million, 2 billion, 50 million dollars. Probably times. more than that. <laughs> well, let's let's use three billion. Yeah. Three times. And yeah, you're yeah. sitting today with Chase. Mm. doing real well you're there's no black hole for you there no no i'm not afraid of anything i just go after what i want and it's all about action taking action and things that you want to do and and this has been a dream for me for years and years to build a city i always think big i say how do i solve the problem in america in one fell swoop and and it came up with this idea and and luckily there was a city that was built 60 years ago that nobody moved in in California here that is built with all the infrastructure for a million people. So now we're going to, I'm buying up the city and I'm building out the city and we're going to, we're going to start moving in homeless people in the next six months and hopefully fill it out and clean up all the problems and hopefully have the support of every single city, state and federal government and get billions in grants. And hopefully lots of people will donate to be able to, to help all these people. Not only does it help all these homeless people but like in san francisco it is crime and destroys real estate value so all of a sudden we get rid of a lot of the crime real estate values and these cities will flourish a lot better if they can take care of that one problem and they all can come to california and it's a beautiful city a full sun and everything else and this is going to be a city that is fully green so there's going to be everything is electric cars powered by hydrogen uh, solar system so it'll be an example of what a city can look like zero carbon Plus, it takes care of the biggest problem we have in this country at the same time. So this mm -hmm. is a really good charity. And, and Chase saw it. And, and that's why we partnered up, because a lot of what he does and a lot of the things that will go through him will go to this charity to help all these people. Yeah. All. yeah. Well, and real quick, on a side note, uh, Steve Ramona City sounds good. So if you need my name to name the city, I, sure. I, no, half, I'm kidding. The audience is going, oh, that's good. But that is so cool because I'm in California. As I told Chase right. Northern California. Um, it's an audacious goal, but you're going to do it in six months. Is the goal when it's going to open? Well, I've already started. I mean, it's been working. I've already buying up all the land and stuff. But to, in six months, we'll have enough to to start bringing people in. And so we'll, we're starting on the infrastructure, but the whole thing is now buying up the whole city, which we're doing. You know, I'm I'm, I'm putting every dime I have extra into this, and I'm bringing other donors and stuff. And soon we'll get grants from the government and stuff to really accelerate what we're doing. But it is a dream, and it's something that has now become real. So it's no longer just a maybe or a thought. It is really being created right now. God, you're God makes angels and he, you're one of them. That is oh, an incredible right. story. Oh. I know you're so humble, Remy, and I appreciate that so much. And what did your experience as a homeless person help you today? I know it's hard to say because I don't want to be homeless and have to no. learn a lesson, but you learned something. Yeah, well, I learned a lot. It gave me a lot of time to study, but I didn't stick around. Like when I when I was homeless, I wasn't with a homeless population. I was on my own because I didn't want to change my thought. But I, I, 
I, I, I am an example of what a homeless person can be. Because I was 12 years old, Arab descent, in the streets, and I was able to build billion dollars many times over. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So I know I could take these people that are homeless who have nothing to do, put them through our system, rehabilitate them, inspire them, create jobs for them, and create lives for them that they never imagined before, and make them back part of useful society instead of being a burden. So that's the goal is to to show me as an example of what I can do in this city and create people that will have businesses there that will work that will really clean themselves up and be part of a useful society be be useful again and they can stay in that city afterwards or they can go back and live anywhere they want but they will be totally clean fully educated and ready to just be back part of the part of what America is known to be a great country that creates great wealth for people and, and have opportunities that's uh, beyond. And these people, this problem has become big, bigger and bigger, and, and people have neglected these people for a long time. You start a podcast, you never know what you're walking into. This is a door exactly. I'm glad I walked into. Exactly. I appreciate that. And on a yeah. side note, audience, Think and Grow Rich, I read it two years ago, and it's changed my life. I've had more abundance in my life the last few years I have in 20 years. So very yeah. powerful. Chase, exactly. let, after all that, I'm going to jump into you about wishes uh -huh. and how you've partnered up with Remy. Tell us about what Wishes yeah. is about, what your goal is. Yeah, well, so the macro problem that uh, Wishes solves, and I don't know how you follow that story, actually, but the macro problem that Wishes is actually solving <laughs> is transparency. Um, you know, uh, donors today don't have the ability to understand what happens to the money after you give it to a charity or to a cause or to a crisis. And, uh, you know, 81% of donors that were surveyed, uh, you know, just recently by the Family School of, the, of Philanthropy showed that... Uh, people they they would give more if they understood what happened to the money they just want to understand the impact that they're that they're giving and so you know if you look at the model of like charity water charity water uh, has been very successful at raising donations but they're pretty clear i mean if you don't know them give to the mission if you do know them you know they understand that they have a real business and any big organization that's raising money uh for something good is they have people costs they have overhead costs they have things that actually cost to run the organization and so but donors just want to understand you know and i think the generations but uh uh that are younger than us they're all technical they want to understand yeah. what happens to the money and the reason why they don't like platforms like gofundme anymore is because it's black box once you actually put money into a bank account it that's it you know and ultimately you don't actually understand what they're doing with that capital until you see them on uh, social media, uh, you know, on a plane or in Cancun tanning, uh, you know, and you're like, well, wait, didn't she have cancer or didn't she have, you know, whatever that situation is. So really uh, just bringing transparency, tax deductibility and rewards to for social good and, and uh, you know, bringing that connection back in charitable giving because, you know, there is no connection when you give anymore, you know, you there, you lose that connection because you actually really never understand what happens to the money. So our thesis is if people understood what happened to the money, they'd give more and more often. And, uh, you know, our, our goal and our mission is, is also audacious and is to help a billion people in a, in a positive way. And so, I love so that. yeah, in our nonprofit, essentially we partnered with Rami to help this initiative, but, um, uh, you know, as a nonprofit, because all donations go through the public charity. Um, so any anybody can raise money for anything or any cause or any individual crisis and still get a tax deductible event by uh, going through the charity. And it's free to anyone to use. So. Oh, that's fantastic. In your bag, you've been a very successful businessman uh, and you're humble too. That's why I love you guys. What did you learn in your background and your business that you did that get you here? Or what got you here? Yeah. I mean, I was a non-tech founder. I, I figured that I had to start building technology in order to be relevant in the, in the world that we're living in today. And I was right. Um, you know, you know, I was selling a commodity based product, been in payments forever. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, realized in order for me to add value to the ecosystem, I had to figure it out. And, uh, although it was super scary, um, I made tons of mistakes. I raised 30, I raised $30 million from my last one tech. I, built it to about a half a billion dollar valuation um and was able to have an exit but uh it it uh it, it was like burning the candle on both ends it was probably one of the worst i mean worst and best experiences of my life best in the fact that i learned a whole bunch but worse in the fact that it was like so stressful i was learning this through the school of hard knocks i had no experience i had a team of 200 people limited process you know so it was just a it was a real mess 
uh, getting to the end, uh, getting to the exit. But, uh, you know, fortunately, I didn't lose everything uh, like Grammy, but I, you know, was able to make it out of there with the skin of my teeth. But uh, definitely, it was just some tough, tough learning experiences. I made a lot of wrong moves, but I also made a lot of right decisions that obviously made uh, made us pretty relevant in the marketplace and allowed us to scale. And, uh, you know, the lessons that I learned from that experience, I was pioneering virtual credit card technology back in 2014 before Apple Card. Wow. Before anyone was had a digital card on their phone, now everyone pays with their phone at the supermarket. But back in 2014, nobody was doing that, right? They didn't start doing that till 2019, you know. But I started building that technology back in 2014, so it allowed me to really build an ecosystem and uh, that created transparency in in a way that is relevant and doesn't change con user be consumer behavior. We're used yeah. to actually. We're used to actually going to buy things at the supermarket using our phones. And that's the way that it works with wishes. So, um, you know, we created that transparency by creating that transparency and tax deductibility. Um, you know, we've made a, we've made a pretty dis disruptive platform inside of the charitable gaming space. I, I'm excited to hear more because I, this is so cool. And you kind of fall on the same path with virtual pay. You start yeah. something very different uh unicorn in business i've heard you know yeah. unicorn some people aren't doing so i'm a nonprofit. walk me through the journey with wishes and how it works yeah sure so as a nonprofit, um we have bundled platforms where uh programs where you can actually so we know that as a nonprofit, you might not just ha have the need to raise money for products or service related things right so which can go towards a mission you also need the ability to raise money for your admin your overhead and all those types of things people cost right Mm -hmm. So you're able to connect your bank account through our platform. Uh, so if you've ever gone to a GoFundMe uh, before, we actually instantly validate the nonprofit. We see if they're going to standing or not. Uh, you can create your story, put up a video, say what you're raising money for. Uh, we have pilots going on with Red Cross uh, right now where they can raise money for any because they have disaster recovery relief. So it's almost like a wisher story. So you have wishers or nonprofits, you know, there's, no difference. The only difference between a wish or a nonprofit is that one is the tax ID that we have to validate and one doesn't, right? Um, and we make sure that uh, that nonprofit is uh, is good before or or someone that's raising money on behalf of, we, need, we have to make sure that they're connected to that. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty simple. It's pretty fast. And it's funny because like he, what, this is the guy that I'm hanging with right now. He just takes a call from, I'm looking at his phone. It's like Donald Sterling, right? Yeah. The, the NBA guy. I was just like, you know, this is the, this is yeah. The, but I'm going to meet him next week and he's got $6 billion at 85 years old. So I'm, I'll get a billion dollars for this charity and stuff. And, 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 and he, and he gave me the honor of humanitarian of the year 2016, because we both put 50 million in to build buildings for the homeless downtown LA. So he likes the project a lot. So from him, you know, he's, he's going to die pretty soon. I hate to say that. And so, yeah, it's so, so <laughs> he, he might as well donate some of that money to what we're doing. And yeah, so yeah. with the contacts of people I know from Carl Icahn to all the biggest tech guys and all that, we'll get this thing funded. And, and from the government and all that, and from what what we can do with wishes and all that, it, it is, I think wishes will bring a lot of money that's from the individuals and yeah. we're going to be doing big concerts, big charity events with movie stars and stuff. And we'll, we'll raise a lot of money for this. This will happen. This is a fit of company basically. Yeah. I love how you're saying that it's, it's going to happen. You hear people <laughs> say, I'm working, I'm working on something. Yeah. We're working on, you're like, it's happening. When you're in the middle of a podcast, he walks away because he's getting a call from a billionaire. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, guy worth $8 billion. Yeah, sorry about me. that. No, no, no. Hey, you know what? If you didn't take it, I wouldn't be yeah. happy. By the way, Donald should be on my show before he dies. Just yeah. I can get him on your show. But he's really yeah. a great guy. All that stuff that happened back there when he lost the team. Yeah. There was a lot of crap going on, but he is the least prejudiced guy that I know. He has me as a friend and I'm Arab. I mean, <laughs> all his players are... <laughs> are black and he has a lot of friends that are so diverse yeah. all that stuff was just a railroad job on him and uh, it just was a sad thing to see but he's been depressed ever since he lost the team even though he got 2.5 billion or something for it in yeah, cash it's, it's tough but, yeah. but it still was his identity i mean he he's the largest apartment holder in la he, he gets 70 million a month in rent i mean yeah, he doesn't the money. he's not already well you know, what's interesting for both of you guys which is so awesome i teach networking Right. business build a relationship networking you just told a great story because you took care of donald sterling no matter right. who he was you right. liked him you 
built a relationship, he's calling you in the middle of a podcast. Yeah. Talk about networking and how important building it's, relationships. Yeah, I've known him for I never, I've known him for thirty years, and if you read my book, you'll see how. I don't know anybody, but I have, I have no, I have, I'm not shy and have a lot of balls. And yeah. I mean, the way yeah. I met Carl Icahn is because he was, uh, I found out he was taking company public that I want to merge it in. And he came to Ve Vegas and I, and I knew people in Vegas found out where he, he, he was staying at. And I just kind of forced myself on him. And then, and then I had a plane at the time and I'm, and, uh, and, uh, and for some reason his plane got canceled and I flew for him back. For some reason? Yeah. I, 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 was, I didn't want to get pissed off. And I flew him back to New York and spent six hours with him, find out where he lived and everything else. And, 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 when, when he dropped me off, he uses what well, never want to see you again and all this stuff. But by in two days, I was I was at his house. I knew he woke up at eleven at seven in the morning. I I was there telling the maid, "Oh, I'm Carl's guest. Where's my room?" And she and she didn't know. She gave me rooms. So I was sitting there at breakfast, and he comes down with his wife, and he starts saying, "I'm going to call the police," and yells at me and all this stuff. And I said, "Just I mean, come down. I had a heart attack <laughs> and all that." But within two weeks, I closed the four hundred million dollar deal with him. So it's you build relationships I, my role dex is seven thousand people just to rewind that back for one second so like please you know, do just imagine carl icon right you come down at 11 o'clock and you see this guy he's drinking coffee at your table that <laughs> you just told like not to i mean that's the craziest story i mean like it's just no it's all true and you're gonna ask him but it, it, it takes that much because you're looking. yeah to me is what do i have to lose he's gonna call me and throw me out have police throw me out big deal but if i win i win a 400 million dollar deal so you just have to look at the win loss yeah. right and don't, and don't be afraid, even though he's known as the most terrible guy and insults you. He uses the F word every other word. He was insulting, attacking me, and all I did was smile and say, You're going to have a heart. Just sit down and have your coffee and stuff like that. And and then eventually he, he had to calm down. He had nothing else to do. He he, he yelled himself out. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's such building a relationship. That is yeah. incredible. Yeah. We did three deals together yeah. afterwards and yeah. we. But I've done that with everybody in my life, with with Adnan Khashoggi. When you read about it, like four years of chasing him down and stuff. But I, but but even Donald Sterling, we were at the same restaurant together and stuff. I didn't know who he was, but somebody thought, oh, he owns the Clipper. And, and then I I just quickly looked at it and oh, it's it's the only profitable team in the league, or most profitable. So I just went to his team, uh, the table and complimented. You know, I have to compliment. I know you get attacked about how you, say, but you you created a profitable franchise, and that is really huge. And how you did that, I am really, uh, you know. I have to give you a good. And from then, I went to dinner with him almost two, three times a week for 20 years and spent time with him and built that relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and same with Hefner or anybody. There's nobody you can't get to and build a relationship if you want to because people are just people. Yeah. And they, and if you listen to them and what they want to hear and, and not be, is a, then you can have a connection. Yeah. Uh, you know, so this is all about building relationships. And just Chase. like, I took a page out of his book though for, for I, this connection. Actually. Yeah. So I just slapped him on as CEO and I just like, yeah <laughs> you're the ceo I like, yeah I, well i i i uh i read his book and i was just like i heard those stories and i was like this is something rammy would do so yeah that's what i'm saying anybody <laughs> can do this you know <laughs> well here's the thing though in the lesson audience you need to learn homeless twice three times or twice four times four times at least you still you still asked you know how many people and you probably chase too you talk to well i'm not well ask them What's the worst thing that happens? I asked Lee Steinberg to be on my show. He came yeah. on my show. Yeah. He says no. Done. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And 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 the, and the first no is never the uh, real no. You just haven't convinced him. You haven't given him the value of him being on the show. A no to me is just one step closer to a yes. So I, I I get more no's in my life I can count on before I get a yes. I wait for thirty no's before. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. So so it's it's really one you got to believe in yourself that you can do it. When, and, and that's all the principles from Think and Go Rich, if you read it and all that. Once you believe in yourself and have a goal that you want to achieve, there's nothing can stop you. You'll get your opportunities will come to you. Your universe will open up to you and give you all the opportunities. And you just have to take action then at that point and make shit happen. And that's what I do. And then that's what people who succeed do. They they take their ideas. Because a lot of people who think about things, wish and dream. If they don't take action, it's just a dream, a wish. But if you take action, it becomes real. So everything I do, I take action instantaneously and make sure I do something every day to, to move forward whatever I decide that I'm going to attack. So yeah, I, I say you're not special. You're only special. That's what I tell about myself. I'm yeah. not special, but you're special because you took action. By the yeah. way, I think I read Think and Grow Rich two years ago. Yeah. Last year was my best year in 30 years. 
Yeah, I'm telling you, those first ones, you should pick up my book. Can you really think and grow rich? But, I have 28 extra keys that I learned from living it that you should read that book. It should inspire you to even do even greater. I've got it on Amazon right on my tab right here. As soon as I get off here, it's ordered and it's here tomorrow. So yeah, I, I've got you're, it ordered. You're going to love that it's book. A good read. Study it and read it over and over. And there's nothing you cannot achieve. Just like in my mind, there's nothing too big. The limits that you put on yourself are the limits that you have. Because yeah. I have no limits. That's why I could build a whole city of a million people to house the homeless people. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that much. And I think it's real and it can happen. So I'm making it happen. So, right. so you got to think that big. Or, or you'll achieve only the things you become what you think of most of the time. And most, and, and if you're a doctor and you think about being a doctor, you study medicine, you study journal, you treat patients, you'll become a doctor. You don't become a businessman. So you become what you think. Of. I think of being, uh, building great things all the time. So that's what I do all the time. So that's, uh, yeah. that's, you just got to shift the way you think, not what you do. And then automatically it becomes what you do. That's why it's a good partnership. You guys have the same mindset. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm excited about wishes. What, what they can do with this, this will be huge. Help a lot of people. Definitely help what I'm doing with uh, with, with my charity and everything. So, so the things that he can create for so many people is so big. And it, and if he does one tenth of what he says, it's an it's enormous help for everybody. And what he does for my charity is so huge. And and, and I think you you should pull up the site right now ie.i.org and see what I'm really building and I'll show you how real it is. And you should tell everybody about it because you know we're already accepting donations and stuff like that. And you're gonna help along with this project and see the progress as it comes along. I'll uh, put they, it yeah, I'll put it in the show notes so people have yeah. access to it and I'll make that them read as well as your book. See how real it is. Yeah. No, I yeah, want to share sure. this out. Definitely. Yeah. Chase, uh, we're running out of time. This has been such a great no, show. Sure. This is what I I think podcasts are coffee, coffee conversations. Yeah. We're sitting at a coffee shop and we're having this banter back and forth. It's yeah. so great. But I'm so excited about wishes. I'm going to support you. I'm going to get some, as I told you earlier, we're going to get you some uh, connections. But yeah, what's fantastic. the future look like for, for wishes? I mean, uh, the future is that we're uh, about three weeks away uh, from launching the platform. We have uh, tens of thousands of uh, pre-registrations um, on there, tons of nonprofits that are um, already on the platform, and uh, the marketplace is full. So um, we're just looking to scale this to the moon and really just help as many people as we can. Um, you know, because of the fact that it's transparent, we believe that... Um, you know, donors will feel more confident donating to whatever it is that they want to donate towards. I mean, if you take the example of the homeless guy on the side of the road, most people won't actually give him money. Why? Because they are afraid that he's going to go spit it on Jack Daniels or something like this. Now, imagine there's a world in which you understood exactly what that homeless guy was going to use that money for, right? The people, more, more people would donate to that, that homeless guy than not donate because of the fact that they understand where the dollars go. And I think you know the power of that is is not to be understated. I think it's uh there's there's big power in that. And the more the donors understand, the more donors will give. And I think that we'll be doing billions of dollars within a couple of years through that platform, uh, helping causes and charities and uh, those in need. And uh, you know so there's a there's a big powerful uh, platform to support those initiatives and uh, you know really kind of empower the initiative that we're going after together with the homeless. Yeah. God bless you both. And, and, and we're not only attacking the homeless, we're solving the, the veterans problem, the migrants problem, the, the affordable housing problem all at once. I mean, this refugees. Is, yeah, I can see yeah, that. All this, all at once in this city, the system is, in, is going to be in place to where they, they move from one to the other until they get to where they're fully trained, fully capable of really living a full life. That's awesome. I want to thank you both for being on. It's such a great story. Uh, mm -hmm. It's such a great business, and, and you're helping nonprofits because that's the backbone of the, of the world. I yeah. think. Yeah, you yeah. help nonprofits changes your world. Yeah. And, and Any last comments? Who, who, who's who's listening to this? You should think giving back. Giving back, you know, makes you feel good. What are you going to do with your money? Spend it on what? You know, especially as you get older in age, you know, wh why not give back? Uh, that's the whole thing. And, and and what's the purpose of life and things? And that's why all these great industrialists and everybody that reaches to an age of maturity and understand that giving back is the most important thing you can do for, in your life. So if anybody's watching this or giving to wishes or my father, it's like giving back and you feel good. I mean, it's better than buying some worthless thing that's, that you'll never use or something else, you know, if, 
just to 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 work with charities and stuff even if it's not mine or wishes the fine charity that you really care about but what's great about wishes it affects a lot of uh, charities like giving back will change your life in so many ways you become happier you feel like yeah. part of society and it's and, and it's, it's so worthwhile just for how it changes you right yeah that's so well said well thank you guys again appreciate you being on i love that get an update down the road here bring you back yeah. see how we're doing with both because sure. I think a lot of people will be very interested in this and we'll stay connected. As I said, I got connections for you and, and use it. Listen to this podcast, use the reverse and forward buttons. These guys said a lot of ton of great things that can help you and inspire you, motivate you and educate you. So use those buttons. We'd love for you to watch the whole show, but use part of it and learn, educate and grow like think and grow itch. Use these, uh, this information to do that. I've got a TV show. Uh, every Friday, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Together we serve. And also don't forget about my swag, my hats, T-shirts, hoodies. Let's say doing business with a servant's heart. Let's spread the message out like these great messages that Chase and Rami talked about today. Let's do the same thing about being a servant's heart. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching and listening to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. See you all soon.